Alright, everybody, welcome back to episode 20 of the Adventurers Audio Podcast. This is part two of our conversation with Elliot because the conversation flowed so well that I had to break it up into two parts. So if you haven't listened to part one yet, pause this, don't listen to it, go back and listen to part one. That way you get the full context of our conversation and then you can come listen to part two. Now let's roll into this week's think tank. Okay, so this week's think tank is camping related. And I want to know, would you rather camp in a haunted forest or in a ghost town? Interesting question, I know, but you have time to think about that throughout this episode. And then at the end, on the bottom, there will be a question or a poll that you can put your comment in and answer it. And we will talk about that a little bit more in next week's episode. All right, without further ado, Let's get into this part two conversation with Elliot Snyder of Freelance Duck Hunting and, of course, the North American Waterfowler podcast. Oh, 100 percent. It's also giving me an outlet because I grew up with um, ADHD. It comes with anxiety and it comes with depression. Um, the outdoors just like it re energizes, recenters, like re spiritualizes everything in me and gives me that like push keep going it turns off all of the anxious thoughts like completely and it just calms me and i feel it almost feels like god or whoever is saying like i got you just Mm. be here in this moment and like observe everything that's around you like look how beautiful everything is around you and i think that when i tap into that it's it's an absolutely beautiful feeling yeah, no, that's well said. So right now I'm getting this chest feeling, not this specific moment, but <laughs> over <laughs> yeah, the last yeah. couple of weeks since hunting season's over, I haven't been mm-hmm. out. And so this last week I have this feeling starting to well up in my chest. It's it's a literal kind of a pressure in my chest and mm-hmm. I know what I need to do. And so tomorrow I'm going out by myself and I've got some, no one goes out to duck hunting places off season. They're all, you can have them all to yourself. And in the spring, yeah. there's lots of ducks. So okay. you can go out and just he witness a lot of waterfowl of and American see them waterfowl all by yourself podcast. in as they're migrating back north. So yeah. um, then they're still. So, so tomorrow, uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm taking my dog. I know exactly where I'm going to go. We're going to go walk through some marshes. And that feeling in my chest I talked about by the end of the day tomorrow, just, it'll be gone. It'll just yeah. dissipate. It, it's, a, it's funny. Like when they say nature is calling, like I can feel that so much. Yeah. Like sometimes I'm just like I'm at home. I'm like, I don't feel whatever and then i start thinking about like "Mm, maybe i'll take like the dog or i'll just go for a walk maybe i'll go try to find like some some deer antler sheds or i'll just like go in the woods and see what i can see like it completely just you need i need it like yeah it just it's so freeing even if it's five minutes it's like a bath yeah Mm -hmm. like just five minutes like outside sometimes like in the winter sometimes i would just go sit in our back patio and sit in the sun and just be like i need sunlight like i need fresh air and sunlight and just be present in that moment and like let all of the bad just kind of float away and like just bring in good positive vibes. Absolutely. And it's like a it's a beautiful thing. Yes, it's so it beautiful. Is. I'm yeah. glad we actually got into that. Because no one no one's asking that question. And I haven't actually delved into some religious things in a while. So like that was very um that was very nice. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Well, thank you for being willing to share. Just keep pushing. Keep, of keep course. diving in. Keep leaning Every day. In. Right. So let's let's bring it back to hunting since hunting is what you do. So you have been how long have you been on YouTube? A while. Uh, see, I just finished up season nine. So started in 20, 2015. So I was actually me and one other guy were the first two people to um, do this format of waterfowl hunting videos on oh, YouTube. Wow. 2015 Dang. was it didn't exist before 2015. I mean, you had commercial stuff. Right. Uh, but like the vlog kind of like, hey, I'm just a guy. You mm-hmm. know, I was on the yeah. the the bottom floor of that, so it was really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. I my mom, I started out in 2011 or 2012 with like a Kodiak point and shoot that ran off of like double A batteries. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my mom got me a GoPro for Christmas one year, and that's that's she shouldn't have done that, <laughs> but like that's when everything changed because like the GoPro had just come out, and I was like, oh, that thing looks really cool, but like never would have thought in a million years, like. I'd be getting it. And then when yeah. I opened it for Christmas, I just immediately 
started filming everything and was like this is great this is a beautiful outlet like I just want to take this further and when it comes to YouTube I don't know about you and I'll ask you this when I started creating content I was creating content for me so like Mm -hmm. my grandfather was huge when it came to like home videos I love watching like old home videos like the nostalgia that I get like just like seeing everybody in that moment so like for me it was a way to document my life and then to have it somewhere where I could see it um so for you what was that process like when you decided I'm going to start putting videos up on YouTube was it that kind of thing or were you like yeah well that's exactly what it was Um, okay I was telling so and I was looking at your channel. You put out a ton of videos 11 years ago. I was like, because when you asked me to be on here, I did a little research. I listened to your 2023 year interview and and all that because I wanted to try to get to know you a little bit before um, yeah. we came on here. But um, so you put out a lot 11 years ago. That's a long time. I mean, you, yeah. you were on started out early on it. But um, around that time, around 11 years ago, I was telling my dad, cause I, I took, I, I keep really meticulous notes on, Ooh. um, my hunting. I'm and so we used to use an Excel spreadsheet. I've now turned it into an app called the North American waterfowler podcast or North American waterfowler, which people can do this for oh. themselves, but it's statistics, but also notes. So, um, uh, yeah. you go on a hunt and you just put in all this information about what you've done. And so we had been doing that since about 2007, and I was telling my dad, I think around 2012, 2013, I'm like, I, so season would start and I would go back through my notes and I would try to remember every single hunt, like remember visuals, think about what happened. I was telling my dad, I was like, I'm not remembering enough from these hunts. Yeah. I'm losing too much memory. I can't, some of these, I can't even remember at all. I said, I think I'm going to start a video log to where, and I didn't even think of YouTube at the time. I'd never right. uploaded it. I was like, I, after the hunts, I'm just going to film myself, um, talking about going over uh, mm-hmm. so that I can go back. And when I say, Hey, what's up? this like, I can have a recording of myself talking about it. And so I didn't do it in 2013. I said, I was going to do it in 2014. Again, I didn't do it in 2014. And then, <laughs> um, my father-in-law came and just handed me this old camera it was a JVC Evro, which it, I mean, if you look at season one of mine, that's what it was filmed on. It was a pretty trashy camera, but <laughs> I didn't end up doing that. What I thought I just ended up bringing it with me on the hunt. And so, I recorded the first time. It was like a three and a half minute video. And I thought I wanted to show it to my dad. So I just put it up on YouTube as a way of like, hey, yeah, here you go. show people and everything. And I look and all of a sudden, like other people are watching. I got like a couple hundred views in a week or something. And, you know, I mean, I'm like, whoa, other okay, people. Yeah. Anyway, I never had anyone watch anything. I, that, <laughs> that was the first experience I'd ever had with that. Right. And so I had been on two hunts that weekend. And this was 2015. And so I put the second one up. And, um, people are kind of watching it two, 300 people. And I look and it's like, I made a penny. Cause back then you didn't, there was no threshold. Yeah. For I know. Money. But I saw <laughs> I made was a good. penny. I was like, Hey-o. well, I made a penny. Uh, and I was joking around. I was, I was telling my family, I was like, if I could just get one check from YouTube, that would be the coolest thing. And you had to get to a hundred dollars. And it yeah. probably took me that whole season to get to a hundred dollars. Oh. So my goal really quickly kind of became if I just want to see if I can get one hundred dollar check. But so about episode five or six, it's like more and more people are watching. And that's when I decided, hey, I'm this is fun. I'm I'm so then it kind of turned into real quickly. It's like I put an intro on there, and because it was yeah. just I I but I didn't expect it, I didn't see it coming. It was a complete shocker to me and then the so the second season as i geared up for the second season i was fully like all right i'm now yeah my goals were totally different from right. from that point that point on mm-hmm. i think back i mean back in 2011 youtube wasn't it's not what it is now mm-hmm. so the intent i mean i mean it was i was watching like altoid survival kit videos and then i was watching like how to sew a pillowcase and then you know like right. cat videos like there was no rhyme or reason to youtube it was just like a weird outlet a lot of music videos like if anything it was almost like mtv but put mm-hmm. on the internet but then anyone could upload and um one of my biggest fears is losing my memory it just it is bad. It's just one of those things that like i just i freak out when i when i think about that possibility. Out, what if i can't ever remember <laughs> what if i can't remember right. so like being able to have a video log of my experiences 
incredible. And when I first started, I was making like weird review videos of like a headlamp in my mom's craft room. Like it was mm -hmm. terrible. And like, cause that's what was on the internet. Like that's, so I thought, oh, I'll do that. And then it turned into like, no, I actually want to like vlog these experiences and like watch these videos back. And some of them are not fine tuned because I, I didn't, I didn't understand. Like I wasn't looking at it from a filmmaker's aspect or from anything like that. I was just looking at it as, oh, I did this thing. Let me put these clips together go on my way i was also editing using the youtube studio mm. so i would upload my videos all private and then you would go in the studio and then you would put them all in there and then you would kind of you maybe put a transition and a weird song that like they already had mm -hmm. picked out in their algorithm or whatever and you just upload it and that would take me like a whole week because you're talking a 10 minute video yeah it would take like an hour to upload yeah. And I'm uploading, you know, I'm filming all day. So I've got three hours or four or five hours of uh, videos. No fun. Yeah, no, it was it was rough. Um, And then, like, I started, OK, like following people that actually make videos, make vlogs. OK, well, what's some advice? Like, oh, how to make a YouTube video. Click on that video. Watch that. Oh, I need to do this a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Or like, what's my voice? What's my perspective on things? Like, what influencers do I draw inspiration from? And not that I want to copy them, but like, oh, I like that style. I like like Casey Neistat. He has that overhead camera view. I love that overhead camera view. I made mm -hmm. one. It's sitting at my parents' house. I wish I had it here. It just takes up too much space. Right. But I try as much as possible to use that because it's a great tool and method to kind of give that perspective. But yeah, yeah like growing and being able to grow your content is huge. Again, I started on a point and shoot. People always ask, like, what's the best camera? It's whatever you have. I mean, nowadays it's your phone. Mm -hmm. Like your phone camera can take a really great video. Yeah, no doubt. As long as you have the space on it or the way to get that footage off your phone and then edit it in some sort of software well the glorious thing about yeah. youtube is is you've got high real high production stuff that can do well but the type mm -hmm. of stuff that you and i are trying to do people don't mm -hmm. give a damn really no. about <laughs> high production they want yeah. you they want mm -hmm. they they form a pseudo relationship with you and so mm -hmm. i've i've got a big community of other waterfowl content creators that I know. Uh, I know a bunch of them and we, mm -hmm. we talk and, and we share ideas and everything. And most of the people that I know have gone away from like, you can spend three hours on a 10 second B roll with music, making it just right. And I've got yeah. some friends that are really good at that and they've gone away from it because it doesn't seem to equal more views. I mean, right. those things are kind of nice, but it's like YouTube want a connection to the creator. That That's what yeah. they want. They want to feel like they know you. And so you can do that with a phone. You can do that with uh, a, a GoPro, you know, but it's, it's like a totally different thing, which is so wonderful because I'm not, I'm not a professional videographer at all. My stuff. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, I am showing you my hunting life. What you're seeing. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And my goal is, it's like, my hunting, my number one goal when I started, when I realized this was was building, which my channel is not huge. It's 46 and a half thousand. I do about a million and a half um, views decent. a year, which is that's, a lot, but it's that's not very like, good. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's decent, but you know, a big channel, you're talking oh, yeah. one, 200, 300, 500,000 million, you know? So it's yeah. like, I, I'm not, I'm not making a ton of money. It's hard <laughs> to make money yeah. on YouTube. You have to like, to really make money on YouTube, you need to be doing like a million or two views a month. Like that, yeah. like then you're going to start really, you know, getting, getting some money. I um, mean, especially with like hunting, like, like oh. fish, fishing is an easier space than, than hunting. A little bit, a little bit. The CPMs yeah. are higher and it, it can be year round where like, I've got September to the end of January. Yep. Maybe a little bit of August and that's like, that's it. Then it just shuts off. Like I, yeah. I post a video I posted yesterday. It's a good, I think it's a good, it's like a 2000 views. Um, anyway, <laughs> I, I, oh, I don't know my point. My point was, is just that, um, the high production thing really, you don't want yeah. it to look horrible. You don't want the camera to be all mm -hmm. shaky and, and it's like, people just want you though. They want yeah. your personality, your character. They want to get to know you. Um, which is puts people like, like you and I just like amateurs at a huge advantage because you know, I can tell about you this about you. It's like you can do that. I can show you me. I can do yeah. it. Yeah, one hundred percent. Right. I almost it's almost impossible for me to not be me. Like sometimes when we're <laughs> out, sometimes when we're out, I'm doing some like weird quirky stuff, and my wife's like, <sighs> and I'm like, I can't not. I just cannot be genuinely who I am. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a I'm good also thing. trying to make her laugh, so sometimes I might go a 
extra. What was your yeah. what was your le- curve for being able to see yourself on video? What kind of everyone has to get past that like hurdle of like seeing mannerisms about yourself you didn't know were there? Mm-hmm. What's that been like for you? <laughs> it's currently, you know what? I think it's an acceptance level on your own part of like just who you are. Um, it, I, my voice sometimes, like listening to my voice, yes, I get a little cringe here and there, but I'm like, that's who you are. It's the same thing with with accepting like my body type. Like I have a little tummy. I've always had a little tummy. I used to hate it. Used to wear t-shirts in the pool and like all that stuff and be very insecure when I was younger. But it's like, this is how you were built. Like this is, this is who you are. You can eat better. You can work out, whatever. Don't kill yourself. Like, but this is your body type. Like just embrace it. Okay. I got a little chub right there. It's okay. It's more of me to love. (laughs) Like that's it. Like. Um, I have short hair, like, okay, whatever. Like, this isn't my choice. And I have long hair, never looked good on me. I was never uh-huh. comfortable with it. When I cut my hair, I was like, oh my God, this is who I am. Like, mm-hmm. I embrace it. I'm not going to hide it. Um, but seeing myself on camera, yeah, it's finding your voice and like your personality and your style helps. So like seeing myself in the beginning and not under like making the video, but not understanding how the video was going to end up while I was making it, if that makes sense, mm-hmm. is harder to edit. And that was where it was really hard, like cringy for me to watch. Cause I was like, where are you going with this? Like, what is the point? Like what? Like, I don't understand. Like everything that I was saying was like, Ugh. but like now as I go through and I make videos or I think of videos, like even when I'm filming, I'll be like, I might start off in one style and then like, oh, you know what? If I edit these couple scenes this way and I use this, say this information in a certain way, then I can put this together and everything is cohesive mm-hmm. and I, I know what I'm talking about, but it also looks like I know what I'm talking about because in the beginning I was very insecure. I had imposter syndrome of like, you don't know enough. You're not good enough, like whatever. So when I'm editing videos, I'm not confident in myself. I'm not confident in the way I was talking to the camera. I'm not confident in the person that I was watching when I was editing, but now I am more confident in who I am. I understand my media. I understand the thing that I'm talking about. And I'm also laying it out there as, listen, I'm not perfect. I don't know everything. But what I do know, I'm going to share with you guys. It might work for you. It might not work for you. But that's what it is. And so when I go to edit, I'm more confident in who I am. I'm more confident in the story that I'm telling, because that's what you're doing when you're making a video. And I'm more confident in the information that I'm giving. So that allowed me to see myself like I'm looking at myself while I'm talking to you, but Mm -hmm. see myself like on the other side of the lens and be like, okay, like you're good girl. Like you got it. Like Just keep going with it. Trust the process. And I get better and better every time I make a video might not be like I go from zero to 100, but every time I edit, I'm getting better. So that builds the confidence um, and allows me. What do you edit with out of curiosity? I edit with Filmora Wondershare. I do too. So, Yep, I used I had a when I first got it more serious with uh, filmmaking. I bought a MacBook that had the i the iMovie on it, but mm, I don't like the Apple system. I just don't like that. You know, I prefer Windows. I prefer an Android based setting. Mm-hmm. So then I switched over. I have an HP now. I found Filmora, and I've been rocking with that ever since. And I really like it. Um, yeah. I don't know everything about it, but so far <laughs> I've been pretty happy with. Yeah. results yeah it's 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 not as professional level as like final cut and adobe but uh, but i does everything i'm i'm not a professional videographer and i'm not trying mm-hmm. to do a bunch of fancy stuff it's got right. transitions it's got title overlays it's got you know it's fine it does yeah. just fine i th- i think that it's a great format <laughs> mm-hmm. i think that for me and like you said we're just people trying to tell our story and the people that are watching our content are more worried about who we are like our character and us so like i don't need something that's gonna give like immaculate whatever like what i have works pretty well for what i've got so right um how about you what was your learning like what was the curve for you for like seeing yourself on camera and then feeling more confident um well i noticed the thing that that i struggled with a little bit is that i noticed things about myself tones of voice facial expressions Mm -hmm. that i had never seen that bothered me but like you said it's like they're just they're just you. But I went through a time of like, okay, I'm going to try to change that. I, mm-hmm. Little fluctuations in my voice and yeah. and whatnot that I was just self-conscious about or I, that I didn't like. And and so I needed, I needed to get by that. But I was able to get by it pretty quickly. The, the <laughs> biggest 
thing, and I think I still do it a little bit, is when I put the camera on myself, um, it's hard for me. It's hard for me sometimes to talk when I just turn the camera on me because I'll just take a camera. I use a camcorder. I've got multiple GoPros, but I've got a um, Sony NX80 okay. um, camcorder. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I will just turn it on myself as I'm setting it up. And I still think there's something in there that where I'm not quite as genuine as like, it doesn't yeah. quite sound like this right now. It sounds right. a little bit more like I'm, I'm a little bit, and I just have never been able to, to, I think it causes people not to relate to me quite as well as I would like them to. And okay. I just have never quite been able to know how to trim that off a little bit. Yeah. Steven Ranella said, that everyone is going to change when they put the camera on themselves. It's a matter of, I can't believe exactly how he phrased it, but essentially when everyone, when you put the camera on yourself, everyone's going to be like a little tiny bit phony or a little bit tiny bit, like have a persona. People just have, mm -hmm. you just have to hope that people like it, I guess. Yeah. That's right. Right. Thinking. And people do yeah. connect to me, but I just wish it was a little bit more like, I don't know. It's, it's hard for me to explain. Well, it's hard to be vulnerable. Yeah. To a point. I mean, I just, I just, I've moved my word document with my questions for you in front of my face, because that's the one thing that I don't like when I'm FaceTiming with someone. Mm -hmm. I like to look at myself sometimes like, no, no, focus on. I've been struggling with to. that too, because my yeah. camera's here. I'm trying to look at me, it's but I hard. really want to look to see, this is me looking at you, oh, but yeah, you can't yeah. see, right. It's totally different yeah. than this. And it's really been bothering me because I would, I, I want to be looking at you when I'm talking. But, viewfinder, anyway. it's annoying. It's <laughs> like <sorry. laughs> I it's okay. I used to have a camera where the viewfinder flipped up, so I was looking right at the camera. Mm -hmm. Now it flips to the side, so I look slightly off. And you can see that in the video, and it's like, oh like know. it's so annoying, but it's I'm trying for you because I want because <laughs> you're gonna relate to me better if I'm like this than like that. Yeah, right. Yeah. So but I get it. Sacrifice so I just covered my face. Look at you. <laughs> That's one thing that like when I started doing the podcasting with the zoom, I was like, oh my God, stop looking at yourself. Stop making like weird, like aces, stop touching weird stuff. That's the yeah. one thing It's like, cause I'm comfortable. So I'm just like, oh, whatever. And then I'm like, you're doing it too much. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I actually, so I've got, I don't know if you know this, I've got two podcasts. I've got the North American waterfowler podcast and then the flatlander kennels podcast, which is all about dog training. Um, yeah. And I, I use a system. I don't know if you've heard of called Riverside. Um, have you not. may, you may check into it. It is phenomenal, phenomenal for recording okay. podcasts. It's absolutely, and it'll, they use AI, so it'll generate, they call them magic clips. It'll generate shorts for you on its own. Ooh. It's, yeah, it's not, I mean, it, it, to get the highest level is, you know, a couple hundred bucks for a year. So it's yeah. not like totally cheap, but it's a fantastic right. podcasting okay. system called, um, Riverside. Riverside. Mm -hmm. I, I Riverside. Dot FM. Riverside. Oh, Riverside. FM. Thank you. Yep. It's wonderful. Yeah. People, you're yeah. like fans can even come. You can give them a link and they can come and watch and comment. Oh, that's it. awesome. It's yeah. it's amazing. And it does a lot of the work for you as far as um editing and stuff. Oh, okay. I haven't honed my podcasting skills yet, but yeah, Zoom sometimes is my friend and then it's also my worst enemy. <laughs> I think that's I think that's been a common thing with anybody who does this sort right. of format but uh well, on zoom well, you'll get into problems with uh, people's internet connections yep. and uh, riverside can will actually load it on my the person's computer and so oh, when you get the final piece it, it records it locally and in the cloud so that genius it, it, internet connection never messes up anything because it's always recording on theirs it's fantastic god you need to be sponsored by them are you sponsored by them? no maybe i'll call them I am sorry to interrupt here, but I just want to remind you guys of a few things. First of all, if you haven't checked out Elliot already, you need to. So he has a YouTube channel called Freelance Duck Hunting. Really great content. If you like um, duck hunting or waterfowl hunting, he is your guy. Love his videos. They're great quality, tells great stories, and it just looks like an all-around good time. And you get to learn some stuff, too, which is really awesome. He's also a part of the North American Waterfowler podcast, so if you want to give that a listen to, you absolutely can. But when you do go over there, definitely tell him that we sent you. Give us a little shout out over here at the Adventures Audio Podcast or from Enthusiast Adventure if you're watching this on YouTube. A quick reminder of this week's Think Tank question, and that is, would you rather camp in a haunted forest or in a ghost town? Now, if it's me... Mm, I, I don't know. I don't know yet. But um, 
I still have time to think about it, and so do you, but don't forget, at the end of the episode, go down to the bottom to the poll or the question and give us an answer to this question, and next week we'll talk about it a little bit more, and I will give you guys my answer and my opinion on which I would rather do. Now, let's move right into this week's Snap That segment. If you don't know what the Snap That segment is, it's basically a social media post that I saw that I like that I want to give a little shout out to. Some of these shout outs are to people or accounts that I have no idea who they are. I've never met them before. I've never talked to them before. I just, you know, saw it and liked it. And others maybe from friends and family, okay? It can be anything that I want it to be, honestly. And this week we have a photograph from Landscape Photo Mag. And this is a beautiful picture of monsoons and the Grand Canyon. I was scrolling and saw this picture and had to take a second and really look at it. And I'm sure that I'm not getting the full effect. If I was actually standing where they were and took this picture, I mean, my breath would be taken away. But it's a beautiful photo of cloudy skies. There's reds and tans and browns and purples and canyons and crevices and water. And it's just beautiful composition photo. So. I wanted to give a shout out to them. I do not know them, but um, this is a great piece of work for sure. Now, let's hop into our final bit of conversation with Elliot Schneider from Freelance Duck Hunting or from the North American Waterfowler Podcast. Here's my thing. When people do podcasts and stuff, do they get sponsors via the thread that they use? See, like I haven't delved that deep. Well, I'm so I work with Waypoint. Um, which is someone I could definitely put you in touch with and you have to run their ads and then um, you get, depending on how many downloads you get, um, you have, you'll, you'll get some kickback from that. But then I find other sponsors in the waterfowl industry and I've got a couple, Mm -hmm. I've got on X which is another good one. Oh my God. You have on X on X sponsors, everybody. God bless you. Yeah. Um, One day (laughs) on X and motion ducks decoys. And I work with, I don't know if you know, final approaches, they're a waterfowl company, but um, so that, and that's just side deals where you're just finding good, good people that good people uh, to work with. mm Mm-hmm. Old town would be I, um, good one to contact. I know, right? I just started um, a partnership with um, Land Pirate, and they are like a clothing company. I ordered a couple of shirts from them, but the really cool thing about them is when you buy any of their shirts, part of the 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 earnings, the money that they make, goes towards some sort of foundation. So I think mm-hmm. I had donated to um, an orphanage foundation, but like there's a ton that you can choose from. So it's not only, you know, giving back to that company or the creator that you're working with. It's also giving back to a beautiful nonprofit who, mm-hmm. you know, uses that money for good. So, yeah. yeah. yeah well, trying... I've been podcasting for almost six years. I was on the duck gun podcast. We did 250 episodes or so. Oh, beautiful. And I've done a hundred on mine. So, you know, in the future, if you have questions or whatever, cause I'm a few years ahead of you in it, don't, you don't hesitate to <laughs> Um, pick my Thank brain you. about that kind of stuff. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. So you work, okay, you have GoPros. You said, let's get back to a little bit of the technology that you use. You use GoPros. Do you use those mounts on your rifle? You know, you have one on your shotgun you, or is right. that on your head? Shot cam. I've got Shot one on cam. my head, one on okay. my one on my gun and mm-hmm. one mounted out in the decoy somewhere. And then I've got my uh, big yeah. camera mm-hmm. that I mm-hmm. use for when I turn the camera on myself or a lot of times I'll just put the gun down if I'm with other people and right. use, I love using the big camera because it's just a, I, I can zoom in, yeah. it's better quality. So, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. One, I, two, three, four, five cameras. Mm-hmm. Isn't it funny how it's like, oh, it's just going to go simple today. And then you have mm-hmm. like five cameras, a big camera bag, the batteries, yeah. and microphones, if you connect microphones. That's the funny thing with like, hu- like archery hunting in general, tough. Solo hunting and trying to film that, <laughs> mm-hmm. even more harder because. The stand that I'm in has been there for decades. Uh, it's my old neighbor's. Like, he knows, deer know that it's there. So it's like any bit of movement from me. Like, I had to shoot my deer sitting down because the first time the herd came in, I stood up and the, the, the oldest female, you know, like snort wheezed and got the hell out of there. 
But then the young ones, of co- they left about 15 minutes later, they come back because they don't know any better. Mm-hmm. But the older deer that no, no. So like I have the arm on this big boom, you know, my big Sony with my lens and my microphone. Mm-hmm. I got a GoPro above me on the tree trying to get that angle of like me in the stand shooting the deer. Uh, I've got one. I, I want to put one on my bow, but I just don't know with like the recoil of the of the bow if I want to do that yet. Mm-hmm. It also changes the weight and the balance point, um, but one on my head. So it's like trying to <laughs> configure right. all these other cameras while you're hunting that's another thing people don't think about is like you watch these people like okay i'm gonna go into the wilderness for five days solo with five items and i'm gonna survive off the land okay but you have a whole camera bag of freaking equipment that's heavy you gotta recharge all that stuff those are fake it's like your batteries are not lasting that long you're not by (laughs) yourself (laughs) you look too clean you don't look like you just struggled yeah and so, so do you uh, keep your GoPros just running the whole time or? Oh my God. My GoPros run all the time. They mm. never stop. One thing that bothered me about watching people that do fishing content would be like, I like to see the hook set. I like to see yeah. like, like you just be like, Oh, I got a fish. And I'm just mm. like, mm, that didn't do it for me. So I roll all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I try to keep, uh, you know, like the, the release camera that I'm going to have this year for like when I'm releasing fish, that's going to obviously be like just, stop and start after every catch Mm -hmm. um but like the back camera the front camera and the chest or hat cam cam are always always rolling have fun Um, sorting through all that it's (laughs) (laughs) it's a lot of work um for me it's so easy because my dog i I can go super fast through my gopro because i've got one camera that goes all the time the one that's out in the decoys one on my head i'll just Mm -hmm. click it on click it off yeah so it's constant beeping which is really annoying but just how how it is and so yeah. but if i go through the clips really fast if i shoot a duck i'll see the dog the dog yep yeah and so that's my that's my marker thank god because man i hate i hate searching through GoPro yeah photos. i used to like when we so nowadays yes i'll like hold the fish up cut the gopro off and then usually you'll have that little clip and i'll be like okay i caught a fish in that video let's edit that and then release it um but in the beginning i would like I would go on the water all day, fish, be exhausted, come home, and then like try to go through and like number the ones where I was catching fish and then leave mm-hmm. all the old ones because sometimes that raw footage, like something really cool could have happened. So I, I want to keep that. I'd be like, oh, books flew by in this video or oh, zoomed in on a frog for B-roll or whatever. Yeah. Um, that just gets so meticulous. But but you learn as you go, like as you're filming uh, what stuff to film and what stuff not to film Mm -hmm. so like when i get on the water i'm consistently rolling if i'm not catching fish okay i cut off two of the cameras and i just keep the front one on until you know still something happens then i'll turn them all back on and be like okay Mm -hmm. maybe we figured something out we just spent an hour trying to figure out this lake we caught one okay now we can fully keep rolling um but yeah it's a lot of footage to go through uh luckily right now I have a backlog. So what I'm doing, I had two YouTube channels. I had the one where I was just doing mostly all vlogging and the bus conversion. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I have my outdoor channel. Basically, everything's coming over to the outdoor channel. That's This is the one that I want to put most of my time and effort into. It's the one that I believe in the most. And it's just, it's all me. So Enthusiast Adventure, that's who I am. So it doesn't just hold me to one thing because I'm not just one thing. I love DIY projects. I love fishing, hunting, camping. Right. pro tripping whatever it all, it all fits into there it all fits into there so luckily i have a little bit of backlog so like i'm transferring these videos over so i have time to edit <laughs> like i have time to actually go on a full adventure and edit and put the time in while having that content continue to flow but behind behind the scenes we're editing for a while like you know what i mean it takes a couple mm-hmm. days just to get for me what i would call the first cut so like mm-hmm. i go in heal through everything condense it all down yeah then i go in again and i'm like okay what does the intro look like add find the song that i want the music put that in okay cool then i can start picking out okay this is information and video this is b-roll start condensing the b-roll down mm-hmm. then to the main content and then you do that a couple more times and then you have your final product a whole week later and you're just like, yeah. here you go. Yeah. How many hours does it typically take you per video? Do you think? 
Oh, God. If we're talking like a fishing video where I was out for four hours. Six, six, twelve, eighteen, eighteen or more. <laughs> Man, you gotta um, condense I, that. You gotta get I, find a way to trim that down. Yeah, that's gonna be hard yeah, to keep up. A hundred percent, it is. It is, and that's just like that's also me taking my time. Right. Um, and if you like if, it, some people hate yeah, yeah. editing. I don't mind editing. No, if, I if I had fun on the adventure, I love editing. I have fun. If it's editing. mediocre, if it's, it's mediocre, and I don't not that excited about it, I don't like it. I find that exactly, exactly. Like, that's why I said when, when I used to watch myself and not understand why I was like, what was I trying to say in this video clip? And how do I make that into a video? That was when it was really hard. But like nowadays, I feel like I've got it down to where it's like, as I'm filming, I can see the fine, like I can see where I'm going. So I'm like, okay, let me do this clip a couple ways this way and that'll be that chunk of b-roll maybe that's like a minute worth of content cool right and you know so then i can fine tune it so then like the fish catches even though it might be 15 minutes of filming for one fish it's like okay i have that clipped so it's that back five minutes cut the whole front part out if it's not needed go from there mm -hmm. so if i can get it down to like what i would consider like two sessions would be like two nights or like two sit downs of editing mm -hmm. per video that makes me happy. Um, you get better the more you do it. <laughs> yeah. Because I also uh, have six, videos seven where hours I'll normally have one taken care yeah. of, but sometimes they'll go into the 15, 16 range. Depends yeah. on how complex, how many. I mean, you're talking, you're talking also like, I mean, four cameras rolling mm -hmm. the whole time. That's just a fishing video. If I'm just yes. doing like, okay, I'm going to build my black pack for my kayak. That might be the whole day of filming, but it's only maybe one minute clips. Yeah, And I know exactly how I'm going to put that information together because it's step by step. That I can do in probably two hours. Sit down, get it in, boom, 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 find the music for it, and then it's done. Yeah. But like the bigger videos, yeah, they take more time. But well, because you have four I, continuously running cameras, that's where your time yeah. is. So I only uh -huh. have one, and I can find – I only have one, and I may be looking for four clips out of it. In a video, yeah. depending on if I'm by myself and I shoot six ducks, I'm looking for six clips. And I don't, right. I know that there's stuff in there that would be cool to put in, but I'm not willing to watch every second of a six hour hunt. I'm just not willing to do it. I just, I'm no. like, I know there's probably yeah. some cool stuff in there. I can't, I can't yeah. do it because I'm, you know, like there's sometimes I was doing almost two podcast episodes a week um, during season. So it's like I've got my regular job, I'm hunting on the mm -hmm. weekends, I'm recording. Yeah. And editing two podcasts a week. So it's like, I can't go. I just can't be that meticulous and go and look for every little cool thing that happens in that yeah. one. But I only have one camera. You have four. God. Yeah. Wait. I do it to myself, man. Um, I <laughs> I did something really cool a couple of years ago. Casey Neistat had like a, an online filming course mm -hmm. that I did because I look up to him so much. And like one of the big things that I took out of that was like, you can put all your work and time into these clips, but if the footage that you have doesn't per like doesn't help you tell the story, it doesn't matter. Sure. So that has allowed me to like really like that's why I kind of comb over my clips a lot because it's like, mm -hmm. okay, this is gonna look cool, but then I do that for like a couple like an hour and then I like I go back and I'm like, yeah, I don't need that. Put yeah. it out. Put all it right. out. Like but because that's the process though. It's like fine, like sure. combing through everything and figuring out what's the important stuff and what's not like as cool as that clip was, it has nothing to do with the story and it's mm -hmm. adding a minute that you don't need. Right. Cut it out. And like, it's okay that we did it. We still are enjoying the process. The video is going to be great. Um, move on. <laughs> so yeah. and trimming yeah. the fat on these videos is so important. Like the retention time, my average retention time, if things are going well, is like seven minutes. Um, yeah. And so you are trying, I'm trying to trim out any little thing where I'm thinking, Oh, that's going to make them click away. You, you like five seconds of something boring and you lose 30% of who's watching. It's yeah. just ridiculous. People on YouTube have no attention span. So this is interesting to me. I've got, my videos are also on uh Roku and oh, okay. fire stick and Android TV. And Perfect. so it's more of a sit down in your living room and the retention time on those videos is like over 50 minutes. And that's with ads all the time strung throughout. Them. So yeah. I I work with a company that I give them the videos and they do everything. I don't, yep. All I have to do is give them the videos. 100%. And so, but YouTube, it's like 
five to seven minutes retention time. People just have no ability. If they're bored for like a second, they're, they're like done. gone. Yeah, and so it, it went it's like trimming the fat all the time. To that. Yep. Yeah. That's so really we, annoys me. I don't yeah, really well, like YouTube, quite honestly. It really annoys the hell out of me. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no. No, no. When, when we started, yeah, attention spans were up here because people were used to watching TV, watching all the ads, mm -hmm. like having no way to skip through or whatever, fast forward, nothing. Nowadays, everything's so instantaneous. Yep. Attention spans are this big. Yeah. I try to go for that eight minute range, but it's tough. Like it's sometimes it's like my the first deer that I got. That's a beautiful story for me to tell. It's not eight minutes long. It's not. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. But like I love the content that it's going to be when it comes out this year. But like Amen. it's not eight, it's not eight minutes long. So yeah. sorry. I'm um, okay with 15 to 22 minutes. I'm fine. I'm going to oh, try yeah. to hook them at the beginning. So my beginning intro is going to be trying to pick out a clip or some of the best clips that happen yep. in about a 25 second period to kind of as a little hook and 100%. then keep, keep my intro. I don't want to sit there and talk for five minutes mm -hmm. um, and then just get, get right to it. But part of that is annoying to me because that's not really how I want to make things. That's not really yeah. how I want to um, do it. I can talk. I can, <laughs> I've been known to be able to sit down and blab. <laughs> um, so like sometimes like when I'm doing videos, like I'm explaining everything that I'm doing. And then when I go to edit, I'm like, you know, just shut up. Like you can trim this up so much because yeah. I think it's important information. It's not important information. Well, yeah. it is. But I know whoever's watching this, but give a shh. Right. about it like mm -hmm. i also know like i have adhd sometimes i can sit and listen but if i'm watching a video it's like how to connect my laptop to my machine whatever i don't need a five minute video i need about a 10 second video that says there you go. go to the machine go to this setting click pair mm -hmm. it'll clear like to the machine and you're done mm -hmm. so it's like as much as effort as whoever put into that five minutes of explaining it i needed about 20 seconds to just tell me and i'm I'm speeding through it because that's not what I'm looking for in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Intros on those kind of videos, you're probably somebody that's like, shh, you're just yeah. going right to where you can see him actually talking about. It. I'm not listening to any of your other BS. Just give me mm -hmm. what I'm looking for. Yeah. Like how to tie a polymer knot. I'm like, all right, but blah, 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 blah. I don't care. Okay. Polymer yes. knot. There it is. Boom, 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 boom. Tie it. We're good. <laughs> yeah. And those videos got hundreds of millions of views because there's so many people who forget uh -huh. and just want that quick, satisfying stuff. That's not the kind of content I want to create, but thank you to all of the people out there that have showed me how to retie fishing knots that I have forgotten throughout the years. Or Well, I think part yeah. of your stuff you're filming for yourself, it sounds like, which yeah. is a totally like I, there are times like I want the video to be like this and I'm doing it like this because I want it like this. And if you guys want to watch, don't you want to click away, click away. Yeah. Bye. Um, who is it? On YouTube, the he's a very popular oh, the bearded woodsman mm -hmm. or the wooded beard. Yeah. The bearded woodsman. Yeah, he always it. says he's like, you can like, comment, whatever. I don't care. It's like, you can like, subscribe. <laughs> I don't care. It doesn't yeah. affect me. And I'm just like, well, that's so bold to yeah. say, like, in your video. <laughs> yeah. Holy crap. I hate some of the cliche. I try to stay away from the cliche sayings, like, um, down below. You know, like, that's yeah. one thing I try to, because it's like, you hear a million people saying it. It's annoying. It's like, how about I not say exactly the same thing as every other person that's putting a, a video on YouTube? You know? But it, and that's almost where the imposter syndrome comes from. It's like, oh, I've got a partnership with this company I'm super excited about. But telling you the information sounds like anybody else who keeps yeah. telling you the same. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to yeah. hear it that way. Yeah. So how do I make it not sound like I'm pushing a commercial ad to you? I'm saying it from my personal like perspective and being sincere yeah. about it without. Loving the, loving the company helps goes a long way. Oh, yeah. 100%. 100%. Oh, well. Don't want to cut it off because this conversation has been incredible, but I actually have to uh, start packing up my car and head down south to the parents' house with the dog and all that fun stuff and get ready yeah. for this camping trip and figure out what I'm doing with this stupid kayak. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the, the bummer part. I have a camping trip planned Monday through Thursday. It's going to rain Monday through Wednesday. Oh, great. I don't even know if it's worth going. It's I'm tent camping. It's not like I have the bus where it's like, oh, it's raining. I can like stand up and take care of whatever and be chill. I'm stuck in a tent and I probably won't even be able to fish. So I'm either yeah. driving to Florida or I'm going camping. 
Well, there can be worse things than being in the middle of the woods 100%. in a sleeping bag, in a tent, hearing rain on the outside. That's a pretty relaxing, wonderful feeling. You're not wrong, but three straight days of it. Yeah. Here's yeah. the problem. It hasn't been warm enough. What like it hasn't been warm enough weather for me to be like it'll be worth it. The fish are gonna be up. So then, because I'm mostly going to fish, um, so it's like I'm gonna go and be mi- again. I put myself in these situations. I love being miserable. I love the rain. I love when the weather's a little bit nasty. It gets me so excited. Mm, yes. But like, if it's not worth it to a point, I'm just yeah. like, what am I doing? But also. I just think this company is giving me the runaround. So if I have the four days blocked off to be camping and I can just take that opportunity to just take this kayak, mm, go to Florida, be, right. be done with it, get my money back and I can move on. That's probably the route that I have to take and just put the camping trip on the back burner, which is fine. I'll be doing some sort of truck camping anyway. It'll be a fun experience. I'll probably vlog it. It'll be a whole thing. Yeah. Um, but it's unfortunate, but that's probably what's going to happen. And that's okay. Uh, oh, that's change. How far is that? That's got to be like 18 15. hours. Oh, man. That's fun. Yikes. And I'm not one who can sit for that long. Oh, you got your podcasts. I do. Have, I have plenty of podcasts. <laughs> that's true. I used to, when I would do like my solo podcast, when I had no guests, I would just, because I had to drive to work, it was about an hour and 15 minutes. So mm-hmm. I would put the lavalier mic on and that's how I would record my podcast, mm-hmm. um, which is a great way to be productive during that time frame. As long as you're being a smart, safe driver. You didn't um, get background. You didn't get car buzz. No. Uh, well, in the first couple ones I did because I was using an app. But if I just use the straight up lavalier mic connected to a recording device mm-hmm. because it's not like Bluetooth or anything, mm-hmm. I didn't get any interference from the car. Oh, wow. Yeah, I got lucky. I, I don't do that anymore. I sit down with this beautiful microphone setup that I have, and I try to do my best. What mic do you have there? It sounds pretty nice. This is a $60 microphone from wow. Amazon. Yes, thank you. I did some research. It's USB connected, but it has the adapter if I wanted to use an interface of some sort. Uh-huh. Um, or put you know the extra dead cat on here in the shock mount, but yeah. I have three of them. Because uh, it was supposed to be three of us doing this other podcast for like road trippers. So I, of course, bit the bullet. was like, I'll buy all the microphones because I'm very like, oh, you want to do it? So I literally <laughs> ordered, them, I ordered them that night. Well, that's good for a $60 <laughs> um, mic. That's fantastic. For a $60 mic, I'm not complaining at Seriously. all. Again, did some research. Um, mm-hmm. You know, watched a bunch of people be like, what are the best, you know, whatever microphones? Because sometimes I just want to record on the laptop. So I just plug it in USB style. Yep. Other times I might want the interface. So far, I've just used the USB and I am very happy with it. You don't mm-hmm. have to. I mean, at one point, I do want to have that microphone that you're sitting with right there. But this it's thing works pretty great. I don't yeah. I don't buy really nice stuff. This is about 280, which isn't yeah. horrible. But no. uh, or maybe it's 300. But it was I. Uh, it was worth every penny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't, have, it, I don't have a great podcasting voice. So I, I need think a, you do. Well, it's not like there's a depth, like a really good pod. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But this at this having a really nice mic is important for me because it if, the depth to it just makes it sound so much better. If you've ever heard Bobby Rose Beef and he is the host of the Jigs and Bigs podcast, he has the most beautiful podcasting voice. He has mm-hmm. a background in television. He does trivia now, like he runs his own trivia thing and he has the podcast. His voice it's so beautiful. And I know he's going to listen to this and then he's going to text me, but like, Oh, it's just like that beautiful entertainer's voice. I'm and envious. I'm just like, yeah, I know. And I'm just like, ah, oh, I've got this kind of like quirky, crackly little <laughs> little voice here. But again, that's my voice. That that's was right. another, I think listening to my voice was the hardest thing to overcome when it comes to mm. editing, because mm. like, you know, you watch influencers and they do voiceovers and I'm like, wow, their voice sounds so good. Yeah, and my voice sounds like crap. It's like, no, that's what your voice sounds like when you're talking to the camera regularly. That's yeah. what people hear. Yeah. So uh, why not do it? We're going to end this. I like to do a rapid round, which is just a bunch of random questions that I, I bring to the table. They can be fun. It's a fun little exit, I guess you could say. All right. So I'm just going to fire them at you and we're going to go from there. Are you ready? I'm ready. OK, tea or coffee? Oh, coffee. Oh, good man. Uh, read a book or listen to a podcast? It used to be book. Now it's short 10 to 15 minute podcast. I got you. Oh, really? I could do like a three hour podcast. I just don't have the time. I can't just sit. Oh, and listen. yeah. I have to be I gave you that. And I don't drive long periods of time. So I can. Oh, we'll see. My drive's about 20 minutes. So I do like 
uh, parts of podcasts. Like I like Lex Friedman. I love Lex Friedman podcast. I, I like Joe Rogan. I like this. Why I like consuming them in Brett. Weinstein. Yeah, in chunks. Mm-hmm. See, I have those big chunks. I have the hour and 50 minute drive. I have like, you know, cleaning up in the house, whatever. So I have a longer but I did listen format. to your full 50, 55 minutes. I, I oh, God, thank you. Was it, was it okay? <laughs> yeah, your year in review. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, summer or winter? Oh, winter. Jeez, that's not even close. I know. Well, uh, pork <laughs> or beef? Uh, beef. Uh, fruits or vegetables? Vegetables. I don't like fruits. Oh, Isn't that weird? That's okay. Um, Did you grow up with? Because this is hilarious. You grew up not, you know, you grew up in the middle of the United States. Did mm-hmm. you grow up with fruit? <laughs> I didn't eat. I've never been big in fruit. Big in okay. fruit. Okay, that's fair. My mom always made sure that we had both. And I, like, I will go to like the fruits and vegetables, like part of a party, then the chips and the salsa section. That's a good section, but okay. cooked, fruit. Uh, it is... cooked, cooked vegetables, not okay. Uh, it has to be cooked. That's fair. Uh, farm or city? Farm. Comedy or horror? Comedy. Rain or snow? Snow. Popsicle or ice cream sandwich? Uh, ice cream sandwich. I don't like artificial <laughs> fruit flavors either. Yeah, I was just gonna Starburst. say. <laughs> you know, oh, okay. I, don't, I I keep talking so much, but no, I okay. after I had COVID, like four months later after COVID, I put a Starburst in my mouth. <gasps> Literally, it was like atomic waste going into my mouth. I it was like it was it was poison. I spit uh. it across the room. There was something about COVID. Did you ever hear about that little taste thing you could uh-huh. get from COVID? Yeah, it happened. In, so artificial fruit flavorings. It hit me like four months later. It would literally taste like hot poison in my mouth. Oh. Crazy. Wow. That's not good. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry that you went through that. Yeah. I don't know um, even why I shared it, but <laughs> I it's totally fine. Um, Asia or Europe? I've never I guess I went to Scotland, which is awesome. So I'll say Oh, Europe. beautiful. Boat or train? Mm, I was actually looking just the other day into tra- I watched a travel thing where this guy was like going in these really nice trains through Canada that was so cool. So I'll, I'll say train. It's on the bucket list for me to like get on, do like a long train ride. But then again, so the majority of my wife's family is in Portugal, like 96% of them are mm-hmm. there. So like when we're there, I mean, I've only been there once, but when we start going there more train is like, you can take the train anywhere. Like, mm-hmm. so I can't wait for that. Um, yeah, casual... I was just looking up prices to, uh, oh, yeah. to Chicago just a couple days ago. Dude, I wish I wish I could just take a plane ride to Florida, but I have to bring this stupid. That's going to make it up. tough. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they'll take that. I don't think they'll put that on the plane. If I strap <laughs> some wheels to it and I just put a label on it, and just yeah. throw it in the cargo. Yeah. yeah. Um, Casual or formal? Casual. Okay. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Thank you. You are correct on no. that. <laughs> COVID ruined Coke for me. It started tasting flowery with that same ah! thing. Ah! God, it, I'm just whatever. now getting Coke back. But when I got that taste thing, I had to move to Dr. Pepper because it, it tasted like a potpourri almost Coke did. Wow, that's very interesting. Yeah. See, my, gran- my grandmother, yeah, it messed up my wife's lungs. I got it and it was more or less like the flu. So it wasn't terrible. But when she got mm-hmm. it, it messed her up. Um, my grandmother mm-hmm. just finished radiation and stuff for mm-hmm. breast cancer. And she got like, um, her taste buds got all messed up. So like for a while, anything that she would eat was just like, like just tasted like medicine. And I felt horrible right. for her. And then finally the doctor was like, let's prescribe something for that to make it better. She was like, yeah, it's been like did three months. Like it did. It did. Um, It's like when babies, it's not road rash, but like when babies get that burn on their tongue from whatever is, is very similar to that. I don't remember the mm. exact name for it. Sorry about it. <laughs> That's weird. Um, With my daughter, it became chicken. It like chicken tasted weird to her. So we had to get her oh. all these smelling, these different smelling therapy. To yeah. me, now to me, that uh-huh. is a hu- huge sign that it was a man-made um virus. Oh, really? That's mm. such a weird side effect. I mean, come on. You get something yeah. and it makes Starburst taste like poison. Yeah, that's I mean, weird. That seems like to me, I don't know. <laughs> we're not gonna dive into that, but yeah, no, <laughs> that's for next not. time. That's for next time. <laughs> Um, chocolate or peanut butter? Peanut butter. Nuggets or fries? Fries. Okay. All right. Four more. Would you rather team up with Wonder Woman or Captain Marvel? Is this before I'm married or after? 
<laughs> if you mean before, because I would go Wonder, 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 Wonder Woman all the way after. Absolutely, Captain America. I mean, I was on thin ice just doing a podcast with a girl. Uh, no, uh, I'm joking. Yeah, right. <laughs> just joking. When um when I made friends with Bobby and Binya, it was funny because like his wife was like. Who is this girl that you're talking to? He's like, don't worry, she's married, she likes girls. There's no, there's no <laughs> one she is like, hundred percent. I'm like, yeah, if, if you need to like phone call your wife, I can talk to her and we'll straighten that out, no problem. <laughs> would Would you rather go to jail for five years or be in a coma for a decade? This is a tough one for me to even answer. Oh, I'm so terrified of jail. That just seems I am like too, but so terrifying. But I'll you're also losing a whole ten years care. of your life. Okay, I don't care. I I'm would like, probably prison life. My lord, I would probably answer the same way. I'm not cut out for jail. Mm -mm. Um, would you rather work under the sun or the extreme cold? Extreme cold. Okay, I'm the same. I have an issue with the heat. It just does not agree with me. I, don't I know sweat why. easy. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not fun. Mm -mm. <laughs> Makes sense is why you're a waterfowl hunter. Just yeah, like, I've been on cold. hunts like zero degrees and I'm sweating. I'm like, it makes me so mad. Like, <laughs> that's zero degrees. People would ask me, so I, I used to deliver mail. I was a mail carrier. And in the wintertime, my whole core would be so hot and I would be sweating. Mm -hmm. And I would have like the minimal amount of layers on, but it's freezing cold outside. And everyone would be like, are you cold? Is it cold? Is it cold? And I'm like, no, I'm sweating. Like I'm like I'm literally sweating and it's freezing cold outside. But for me, like I'm too hot. How does that make sense? See, I think people like you and me, our ancestors must have been like way up north. Probably. Had it to has be. to be that. Had to I can't be. I can't it's handle it. Like any even in the 70s is too hot. I, I mean it's fine, yeah. but like give me fifties, sixties mm -hmm. every day. A hundred percent. My mom actually like passes out if it gets too hot. It's really weird. Mm. I get heat exhaustion very easily. That's kind of why delivering mail for me was not a good idea. Because yeah, in the summertime, right. I mean, it, and the vehicles are not air conditioned. There's no outlet. There's no recovery. Uh, I had to leave three separate days, like three separate times within about a week and a half from heat exhaustion. And I was like, I don't think I can do this. Yeah. Like, it's not no good. No good. Okay. Would you rather lounge? <laughs> this is a stupid question. Would you rather lounge by the pool or the beach? Uh, neither, neither yeah, a hot tub. Give me, give me a hot tub in the middle of winter. Although tropical areas are pretty cool. They are. They are. Uh, I went to Jamaica a few years ago with my wife and her family, and I had the worst allergic reaction to something before we left. So I was literally like covered head to toe. From the sun, like <laughs> it's like my eyes were swollen. I had rashes everywhere, and, oh, no. and they were like, they were like, it's a heat allergy, and I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, so I was like bundled up. I couldn't leave the the room until like it was like past the the highest point of the day. That's Everyone was horrible. at the beach, and I was like in the room. That's terrible. No, I proved myself. This was before we were engaged. This was like the first big trip we took, and like with her parents. So I was just like. Everything's great. I'm in such a good mood. It's beautiful here. <laughs> like <laughs> on the inside, I'm screaming. Melting. My skin yeah. is like I want to rip it all off. Oh, it no. was such a great time. That's hilarious. Well, I want to thank you so much for yeah. being here. The conversation was absolutely incredible. I wish nothing but the most like success and happiness to you. Um, let people know where they can find you, give them your socials, your content, sure. all of that stuff before you go. In Instagram is freelance duck hunting. My YouTube channel is freelance duck hunting. The two podcasts are the North American waterfowler podcast and the flatlander kennels podcast with Chris Jobman. Beautiful. Oh, thank you again so much for being here. Yeah, I enjoyed um, it. I'm going to, yeah, go play with the dog or do whatever you're going to do. Uh, I got to finish know. my taxes. Oh, I, you know what? That's why my dad... I'm just like, let's keep talking, please. Just let's keep talking. Do not want to go mess with my taxes. <laughs> my dad was supposed to be doing my taxes. Uh, this was like the last year that like, because again, we're just got married, but like the paperwork hasn't technically gone through yet. Still waiting mm -hmm. on that. So technically I'm still filing as an individual. So like mm -hmm. my dad normally handles that stuff. So like, that's why I'm also going down to be like, dad, did you? do all of this because <laughs> i need to know get this done for me yeah, now I, i'm I late I'm 20s adult. do my taxes dad <laughs> i know i'm an adult but can you please just figure this out well, we've been going to the same guy so it's like 
Oh, do Let's... TurboTax. It's so easy. Oh, is it? Well, that's yes. next year. Oh, it's I'll... so easy. And we've when got we... income streams going all over the place. Oh, okay. And my taxes are complex and I can TurboTax. I'm telling you, if you don't have like a super complex system, TurboTax is so easy. I'm writing it down. For real. TurboTax. Well, ladies and gentlemen, who is all listening to this show or if you're watching this via the YouTube channel, go and support Elliot. He is really cool. I really like him. I think he's a really great guy. His content is super awesome. I did the deep dive just like you did to the content just before you got on here. Just to, like get, you got to like test the waters. I didn't want right. to know too much about you, but I needed a little something, something. Uh, say hi to Georgie for me. I'm a sucker for a dog. <laughs> and uh, you have a great day. Good luck. I know that hunting season is coming to an end for you, but good luck next season. And uh, maybe we'll have you on uh, in about a year or so. Bring you back. Sounds good. Or maybe I'll have you <laughs> over on mine. You can talk about your bus build. That'd be interesting to me. Oh, that would, sir. I, if there's one thing I love to talk about, it's this bus build. It's actually going to be, um, the paperwork is going to be filed by next week so that it's going to be street legal and I'm going to be going forever. Awesome. So, Keep yes. pushing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a great day. God bless, man. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. You too. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, guys, that is going to wrap it up for our conversation with Elliot. But before you go, I want to give you guys a little recap of my week. We had some really epic trips out on the water this week. We got the new Old Town kayak. Oh, I have to believe that out because I haven't told you guys this yet. But <laughs> if you do not know, a little backstory. Um, we received, we ordered an old, uh, we ordered the Van Hunks Shad. It was like a 10 foot four kayak. It's one of those lesser known companies or brands. Um, and I ordered it from Florida. It had to be shipped to New Jersey. During shipping, it got damaged. They tried to give me the BS runaround and, you know, not refund me or not, uh, you know, replace the item. So what I wound up doing was driving all the way to Missouri with my wife. It was a three-day round trip to exchange this kayak for an upgraded model. Um, I did not stick with Van Hunks. Uh, it was like, F that. I'm not doing that. It's not what I want. Not the type of company that I want to be associated with. Um, their kayaks are built of lesser quality, thinner material, which is just just, just not, uh, not going to work out for me. So I got a new kayak, and I'm actually going to talk about that a little bit more in next week's episode because we have conversations between me and my wife from the car rides, both there and back, from getting this kayak. So we'll talk about that more in next week's episode. But I found this lake 45 minutes from my apartment. And oh my god, it's like a mini version of Champlain. I love this lake, okay? I've spent um, 13 hours on, the, on it this week, excuse me, uh, going on two different trips. And we are in the Jigs and Bigs multi-species scavenger hunt. Right now, we are placed ninth or eighth, excuse me, out of 27 anglers. We've got, I think, six points, which is six different species on the board right now, which is absolutely amazing. And all of them came out of this new lake on my new kayak. I have all great things to say about it so far. The maneuverability of this kayak, the, the modularity of it the ease of transport, and just the overall experience that I've had on this boat so far has made me super, super happy. I have not got a donkey in the boat yet, but I know that it is coming, and I am stoked, guys. The spawn is happening. Things are getting ramped up here in New Jersey, and pretty soon we're going to be going to Vermont to hit up Champlain for a week or so, and I am just just so excited for the fishing that is going to be happening within the next couple of weeks or month, I should say. Um, I will keep you guys updated with the Jigs and Bigs tournament as far as I'm concerned. Um, this is my second month doing it. Last month I had so much stuff going on that I didn't really get to designate any time to it. But this month I am coming for you guys. Trust and believe it. For now, I want to thank you for listening to the Adventures Audio Podcast. Don't forget, at the end of the episode, go ahead and answer that think tank, and uh, I will see all of you on the next adventure.